right guys it is a dark and stormy day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization here in the doomsday bunker that I have discovered here in uh, <coughs> somewhere in the bowels of the collapsing empire of Atlanta Georgia I need to get out there with a camera in Atlanta, Georgia, here on this rainy, stormy, where are we? We are at Saturday, April 24th, 2021, I believe, and I want to thank Alert Tribes member, Brother Rob. Rob, how do you pronounce your last name, Milkarski, or... I have a problem with Brother Rob. We'll just call him Brother Rob from his excellent website, Undenial. Uh, Rob has brought to my attention someone he was not aware of, this doomer and collapsitarian named Chris Clugston. Never heard of Chris. If I were still doing interviews, he would be at the top of my list. He has a new book out called Blip. Blip which is his word for basically what humans are going to look like in the fossil record, I believe. <clears throat> but digging around to find out more about this guy, I went all the way back to 2008, which is the same year I came down this rabbit hole. To uh, I like to go back into the Doomer annals to see how well people called it. So we're going to go back to 2008 to this website I've read from before, this excellent website called resilience.org. If you're not familiar with resilience.org, you should fix that in your life, but we're going to go back <clears throat> and see what Chris Clugston had to say about America's self-inflicted societal collapse. There you go. It originally appeared in Energy Bulletin uh, reproduced here. Okay, take it away, Chris Clugston, and tell us about America's self-inflicted societal collapse. <coughs> Starting out with this quote by Jared Diamond, Collapse is not inevitable, but depends on a society's choice. And he uh, starts out with this little, I don't know, uh, this little introduction. I have argued elsewhere that our American way of life is not sustainable, and I have presented compelling evidence to demonstrate that America is on the verge of imminent societal collapse. The purpose of the following paper is to make the case that we, all Americans, through our distorted worldview and resulting dysfunctional resource utilization behavior, <clears throat> are responsible for our predicament, and that we lack the collective will to take meaningful action to mitigate it's catastrophic consequences. And guys, I am going to put the link onto this long, detailed essay. I encourage you to read it myself, but if you would just, if you would prefer to listen to some old doomer sitting around in a, uh, <clears throat> in a doomsday bunker, I will be happy to do that for you. <clears throat> okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to start out with American perspectives. Okay, here is the mainstream American perspective. The vast majority of our population, mainstream America, maintains the belief that we are on the road to the promised land. Perpetual economic growth and pr prosperity enabled by unlimited <coughs> natural resources. <clears throat> Moreover, they believe that our American way of life is a birthright, our destiny. The American way of life is not <clears throat> negotiable. 
as we've all heard Senor Bush say. Okay, then we have the concerned citizen perspective. <clears throat> Remember, this is 2008, a small but growing minority of concerned citizens, the informed few, understands that we are actually on the highway to hell, the road to societal collapse. They implore us to slow down, to conserve natural resources, to reduce our impact on the environment, to balance our budgets. <clears throat> but we dare not do anything too drastic. It would not be socially acceptable. Okay, now let's hear about reality. <clears throat> the reality is that we are running flat out on the highway to hell and that societal collapse is imminent. Perhaps within five years, meaning 2013, sorry Chris, you missed that one, probably within 15 years meaning uh, 2023, we shall see, and almost certainly within 25 years, meaning 2033, <clears throat> our only rational course of action is to get off the highway, to transition quickly, and beginning immediately to a sustainable lifetime paradigm. The consequences associated with getting off, yes, will be very painful. Significant reductions in our population level and material living standards, <clears throat> but they pale in comparison to the consequences associated with staying on the highway to hell. Okay, let's look at our heritage. Okay, <clears throat> these are some perceptions of the origins of our American way of life. Okay, here is the American mainstream perspective on our heritage. <clears throat> mainstream America believes that through their heroic efforts, determination, and resolve, American pioneers settled our vast, essentially uninhabited country and took control of its virtually unlimited natural resources. During the 500 years since Columbus discovered America, successive generations of Americans have dramatically improved our level of well-being through hard work, innovation, perseverance, and courage. We earned it. In the process of settling this great land, we have rightly exploited Native Americans and nature for our benefit, both through divine justification and self-bestowed justifications. We Americans are exceptional. In fact, we are the Christian God's chosen people. America has become the greatest nation the world has ever known and it will remain so forever. Okay, let's compare that to the concerned citizen perspective on our heritage. <clears throat> An increasing number of concerned citizens believe that America has been involved in an orgy of excess characterized by excessive consumption, excessive population growth, and excessive waste, especially since the inception of our Industrial Revolution in the early 19th century. The orgy has been fostered by our government and corporate leaders who have created a political economic system that has essentially institutionalized the orgy in order to solidify their power base and increase their material wealth. While all Americans have benefited materially <coughs> from the orgy to some degree, our leaders and their favored constituents have benefited disproportionately. 
Also, the material benefits provided by the orgy have come at the expense of an array of imminently disastrous ecological and economic problems, including pollution, anthropogenic climate change, species extinction, habitat degradation, resource depletion, overpopulation, excessive debt, underfunded social entitlement programs, increasing foreign ownership, and persistent inflation. So that is the concerned citizen perspective in 2008. But what was the reality back in 2008? The reality, a vast majority of mainstream Americans have relied upon high school textbooks and Hollywood for their history education. It is loosely based on a true story. The mainstream historical perspective is consequently naive, simplistic, myth-based, faith-based, superficial, and generally un- informed. Okay, so guys, this is a long, uh, long involved essay. I'm going to have to skip over a lot of this. Uh, this is a great essay. Probably take me about an hour to read as long as I do. So let's skip ahead <coughs> to our predicament at least at what our predicament looked like to Chris Clugston in the year 2008. All right, what are some perceptions of our current situation? Of course, we have the American mainstream perspective. Mainstream America believes that we have experienced transitory economic, social, and political problems throughout our country's history, and that since we have always successfully resolved our problems in the past and have continuously improved our level of material well-being in the process, we have nothing to fear today. Let's compare that to the concerned citizen perspective. Concerned citizens believe that our orgy of excess caused a litany of ecological and economic problems which are placing ever increasing stress on our overtaxed ecosystems and economy. As a result, we are rapidly approaching various tipping points that could cause serious lifestyle disruptions if we fail to act soon by stopping the orgy and addressing the consequent problems. Okay, let's now look at the reality of our predicament in the year 2008. <clears throat> Because they perceive cyclicality to be the natural order of things, mainstream America trivializes or totally denies our current predicament. They hold a faith-based belief that our problems will always resolve themselves favorably because they always have in the past. Concerned citizens correctly perceive that our orgy of excess and its consequent ecological and economic problems pose serious threats to our American way of life, but they, the concerned citizens, erroneously conclude that the orgy itself and its derivative problems are our primary concern. Yes, then uh, he jumps into the American overextension. Uh, we're just for the sake of time, and I uh, urge you uh, 
to uh, fill in the blanks of this, we're going to skip over the American mainstream perspective here, down here in the Doomosphere. So let's, let's look at the calls. We're going to uh, skip over the mainstream perspective. Let's listen to the concerned citizen perspective. Concerned citizens place the blame for our orgy of excess and its resulting ecological and economic problems on it, our broken political economic system, and them. Yes, our self-serving and out-of-touch leaders who perpetrate it on innocent and powerless us, we are culpable only indirectly as victims of a defective system and poor leadership. We have forgiven ourselves, however, because we cannot possibly make informed decisions. They have continually deceived and misled us. So what is the reality? Okay. <clears throat> Because this is looking at mainstream, uh, in, 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 anyway, guys, uh, good Lord, there is, uh, I obviously have seen that I have uh, bitten off way too much uh, as I can chew. Let's just, I, I'm just going to hit a few of the points. Good Lord, Chris Clugston has done his homework and uh, I can imagine what this man uh, sounds like in the year 2021. I'll have to get his new book, Blip. Okay, but let's look at some of his realities. The reality is that they, <clears throat> it, and them are all us, all Americans, past and present, but primarily those of us living since the inception of our Industrial Revolution are responsible for our predicament. We are directly responsible through our individual unsustainable resource utilization behavior. And more importantly, we are indirectly responsible as beneficiaries of unsustainable resource utilization behavior perpetrated on our behalf by our political and economic representatives, which leads us into the more general discussion of our unsustainable American way of life. Yes, uh, it is our cor cornucopian worldview, our perceived entitlement to perpetual economic growth and prosperity enabled by unlimited natural resources and natural habitats is completely inconsistent with reality. Yes, <clears throat> our, pers our persistent over-exploitation of natural resources, our persistent over-exploitation of natural habitats, and our persistent fiscal imprudence is physically impossible to sustain on a finite planet. So what is, if there is such thing as a solution to our predicament? Yes, concerned citizens believe that we must fix it and replace them as a prerequisite to permanently stopping our orgy of excess, blah, blah, blah. Ecologically concerned citizens would significantly increase government intervention and control in order to implement national, state, and local programs to reduce natural resource depletion. Yes, uh -huh. blah, blah, blah. Okay, but we're going to good 
Lord, we are going to, uh, does, my God, guys, uh, he has written an entire book here. Uh, let's just jump to the bottom of this and, and wrap it up here uh, about our legacy. Since there, there are no solutions is the reality. There are no solutions to a predicament. We all know that. Okay, we're going to uh, fast forward to the bottom of this excellent essay and wrap it up. Okay, <clears throat> wrap it up for us, Chris Clugston. The inevitable consequences associated with our continued blind, blind adherence to the American way is imminent societal collapse. We are grossly overshot ecologically and technically bankrupt economically. Attempts to become more sustainable will, at best, only temporarily delay our inevitable collapse. And should we opt to transition voluntarily to a sustainable lifestyle style paradigm through the implementation of whatever an ACR is, we will still experience population level and material living standard reductions in the order of 80%. There can be no soft landing. So we're going to wrap it up with the real inconvenient truth. Okay, the real inconvenient truth. <clears throat> Unfortunately, the probability that we will choose to modify our distorted worldview and our dysfunctional resource utilization behavior is essentially zero. We will not implement an American cultural revolution, or the ACR is an American cultural revolution which will never be implemented, and we will not opt to transition voluntarily to a sustainable lifestyle paradigm. As human beings, and especially as self-entitled Americans, we have demonstrated little capacity for self-limiting behavior, especially if it involves drastic reductions to some combination of our population level and material living standards. We simply lack the collective will to reduce voluntarily our ecological and economic footprint to a sustainable size and to live forever within the constraints imposed by that reduced footprint. Instead, we will use the remaining ecological and economic resources available to us in futile attempts to perpetuate our American way of life at all costs, even as we encounter increasingly severe resource supply shortages and disruptions. Nature will inevitably intervene through disasters, disease, pestilence, and famine to force our transition to sustainability through societal collapse unless we annihilate ourselves in the meantime through domestic and international resource wars. Is Chris Clugston Book Hermit's real name? We may have forgiven ourselves for being uninformed or misinformed, but nature has not forgiven anybody. Ah, amen, brother. Chris Clugston, uh, 
anyway, I highly advise uh, anybody not understanding uh, what is our predicament and how we are going to completely. Uh, that, that was uh, in 2008, and uh, everything he just said in that uh, story is a hell of a lot more true in 2021. So I suggest you get out there and enjoy our predicament. And, uh, yes, jingle bells, ho, ho, ho. This is, uh, what this is, guys, is an eBay store. Uh, this is an eBay store. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm not... Uh, casting aspersions on this uh, the, 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 the Doomer chick who lives here. She has the most uh, delicious sense of irony. Uh, she understands everything that I just, uh, every single thing that I just said. She understands completely. And, uh, but, you know... Where would us doomers be uh, without irony? Yes, uh, the the depressed teddy bear doomer. That is a doomer teddy bear for sure. Anyway, get out there and enjoy your predicament while you still can. Gideon, blow your trumpet before we go pop. Bye, guys.